This is the Dr. Haley Show podcast. Today's guest is Dr. Stephanie Zagragan. Dr. Stephanie is my favorite kind of doctor, a doctor of chiropractic. <laughs> she has practices, she has offices in both Georgia and South Carolina. Her practice, Lime and Lotus, I'm curious about the name. I want to find out more about that today. And she helps people, among other things, get well from hormone imbalances, and she helps people detox. Dr. Stephanie, thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Dr. Haley. I'm so happy to be here with you today. Well, and I did look up your website. Mm -hmm. I looked up your YouTube channel, and I saw some uh, very structured content. <laughs> <laughs> You're a very organized person. I, I watched a few of your videos. Everything has a very methodical approach to it. I would probably guess you know that, and that's just who you are. You do things very accurately, yes? Yes, very methodical, very accurately. Um, I was that kid when I was little that always asked why, to the point that I annoyed my parents. Um, so now I get to ask why the human body. So I've kind of transferred just that personality trait into just an entire career. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love what you're doing. In fact, I actually downloaded, and it's right here. I took my my oh uh, yeah <laughs> my text my test. I did okay. I scored a forty, and uh, hopefully we'll we'll talk about that a little bit, where you can take your toxicity quiz mm -hmm. and decide if you need to detoxify. All all who are listening. Yep. Um, I'm borderline there. I scored a forty, and I think that's kind of well. You should probably consider it, and maybe. Uh, yeah. Forty is kind of my those... cutoff on that on that quiz. So yeah. you, you just made the cutoff. <laughs> I'm teetering right there on on the edge of of disaster. So how did you choose chiropractic? Oh goodness, I chose chiropractic. Um, and initially, I thought I wanted to go into medicine, and then after a little bit of time, I realized I'm really not down with a lot of drugs and surgery. So it was like, what, 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 where, where do I go from here? Um, went into physical therapy and the school that I was at Georgia state was very competitive. Um, hundreds of children or kids applied and only about 40 got into the program. So I was at Georgia state doing my bachelor's degree in exercise physiology. I started volunteering and to even apply, you had to do a thousand hours of volunteer work before you could even apply. So I, I hit the ground running my freshman year, started volunteering at the children's hospital at Grady here in Atlanta, Georgia, and just realized that everyone that was working really didn't seem like they liked their job. And I asked if you had to do it again, would you? Um, every single one of them said no. And so I was like, well, now what? Um, and I had a friend of mine that was going through the same process. And then um, he mentioned, well, let's go be chiropractors. And I really didn't know what chiropractic was at that point. I'm like, what chiropractors? Who are these people? And for my senior year, I had to do an internship and just decided, let me check out the chiropractors. Um, these chiropractors were outside of Atlanta. They helped with um, some of the Falcons players. They had a family practice. I saw people crawl in and walk out and they were having such a fun time doing it. And I said, this, this is my home. And I graduated in May and started chiropractic school in October. And the rest, as they say, is history. Yeah. You know, I, I have a similar story, only I knew uh, more about chiropractic because mm -hmm. I went as a kid and this doctor, it was almost like he did this Jesus thing to me, uh, raising the dead kind of thing. And I wanted to be like Jesus. So I went to chiropractic school. You know what I like about it, though? Not the fact that we help people without getting all bloody and in guts and everything like that. And we don't have to give drugs and medicine, but it's the approach that is taken by chiropractors to diagnosing, figuring out what's wrong and figuring out a treatment plan. It's looking deeper than what is the symptom yeah. and how do I reverse that symptom? Oh, it's pain. We give it something that takes away pain. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's runny. We, we, we clog it up. It's clogged yeah. up. We make it runny. You know, it's, it's saying, well, why is it clogged? Why is it runny? Why does it hurt? and try to get to that root cause. So that's why chiropractors are my favorite kinds, uh, yes. my favorite kind of doctors. And, and I think that's probably why I was drawn to that once I really found out what chiropractic was and, and how in depth the training was that we received and really what kind of doctors we are, really looking at the body as a whole, looking at function um, and looking at the, the why of things. So that was right up my alley at that point. <laughs> now, you're also a certified clinical nutritionist. Yes. When did that come to be and why? When did you decide to add nutrition? Yeah, I started at Life University for my chiropractic training and that you could do a concurrent um, 
the, the doctor of chiropractic and do additional classes. So I was that crazy person that was doing my full load of chiropractic and doing additional nutrition classes. Um, I didn't get to finish because I tra- ended up transferring out and finishing my chiropractic journey at Palmer West in San Jose, California. But I always loved nutrition. I always wanted to have kind of a multifaceted um, practice, you know, just like BJ Palmer had said, hey, nutrition is important. You know, all the things are important, clean water, positive mental attitude, what we put in our bodies. So I just kind of wanted to go that route of being able to offer multiple modalities and, and help to my patients. So after I started my practice, um, about two years later, I finished up uh, that master's degree in clinical nutrition. That's great. Yeah, for me, it was uh, more of a delayed thing. I was yeah. doing chiropractic and I learned the importance of nutrition. When mm-hmm. I was in chiropractic school, I thought I could just exercise whatever I ate into this <laughs> you know, superhuman being and stuff. Uh, but, you know, as I got older and things started to hurt and I, I didn't have the energy levels of when I was a teenager, it's like, well, maybe I'm wrong about that. There, yeah. you know, this, this, maybe it's not, you know, maybe there is truth to the garbage in, garbage out. Absolutely. Concept. How did you come to focus on balancing hormones and, and detoxifying? I think that was more of my own personal journey. I think what led me down that path specifically, but when I was in chiropractic school, I had really bad um, menstrual problems, very, you know, lots of cramps. Um, every month I literally was vomiting and headaches and migraines and nothing was <clears throat> really helping. And finally at 20, what was I, 24 years old, started having hot, hot flashes and night sweats. <laughs> I'm like, this, is, this isn't normal. At 24 so, years old. Yep. Yes. Yes. So I wow. was in my senior year of chiropractic school or getting into that senior year. And of course it's crazy busy. We're all stressful. We're trying to do boards. I was working at the time. I was planning a wedding, all the things. And just my body wasn't happy with me. So I went to the gynecologist and he did lab work, exams and everything else. Told me everything was, you know, normal. Uh, I'm like, absolutely. This is not normal. Like having these symptoms every single month, not normal. I was literally working my life around my menstrual cycle. So that's not normal. Um, so he said, you've got two options. We can either give you birth control pills or we can start cutting things out. And being in chiropractic school, not neither of those options really felt intuitively right for me. And I said, there has to be a better way. And thank goodness I was in chiropractic school. Um, I guess I really didn't pay too much attention in my chronology classes. You know, I got the A's, but just didn't really put it, put it together, um, in a, a, you know, world worldly sense. And that's when I said, I really need to like learn about this more and, and why, why am I feeling this way when labs are normal and everything else? So then I learned that there are other lab work that we can do more functional type labs to actually assess where your hormones are at, what levels they're at. And so I did my own test. I figured out that my cortisol levels were high. My estrogen was high. My testosterone was high. My progesterone was low. Basically I was a hot mess, but I also had an answer, which was nice because so many women don't have answers when they go to the doctor. And now that I knew what was wrong, now it was like, how do we fix this without the drugs or the surgeries or everything else? And so that was really diving deep into nutrition, herbology, all those types of things, lifestyle changes, and was able to completely fix my cycle all naturally, which is what I wanted. Um, Now I have to use an app to know when it's coming. And I think that passion and just my own experience has led me to be able to help thousands of women in the last 20 years in clinical practice um, with those kind of issues. Right, right. What is the difference between the diagnostics used when you went to the medical doctor to what you are doing? How are you diagnosing? How are you testing patients? Yeah, generally they run lab work with patients and they, to me, they're not complete labs. They might look at, um, let's say she's, it's a woman that's having a menstrual cycle. They'll look at your labs, you generally blood and generally one day of the month. Well, it's probably the day you're feeling pretty good. (laughs) So first of all, so we don't have a full cycle. And also we've got um, total hormones, we have free hormones, and the free hormones are the functional hormones. Those are hormones that are attached to proteins, um, sorry, unattached to proteins. The other hormones are attached to proteins. And a lot of times they're testing all the players in the game. But really what I want to know from a functional standpoint is, does it matter how many people are on the team or does it matter how many people are, are actually playing on the field? So a lot of times they're testing all those together and you might have enough people on the bench, but maybe not enough people playing on the field. So mm. I want to make sure one, we, we can convert hormones correctly. We have enough people playing in the field. Um, and when we take players off the field and put them on the bench, like we're putting them in the right spot, so to speak. So that's kind of a good analogy for functional testing. 
Um, the way that I typically do female hormones, it's generally via saliva because with that, I can have a woman give multiple saliva samples throughout one whole month. And I can actually see the dance of her hormones. Um, did she ovulate? Are her levels appropriate at different um, times of the month? And if not, we can tackle it at certain times of the month or um, I know more specifically what to do. So that's kind of been my approach. Um, whether it's female hormones, adrenal hormones, thyroid hormones, we really want to be testing more in depth and more functionality for, for okay. patients. For men that might be listening, are you helping them as well? Yes. Yes. Even though men don't have that cycle like women do on, on, on the daily basis, men have hormones too. And they are functional hormones. You know, they're, they kind of are doing this a bit for men. Um, they'll test free testosterone. We kind of hear that more nowadays. So they'll test testosterone, free testosterone, but really they should be testing our free, our total and free hormones of everything. So free estrogen, free progesterone, free testosterone, but we can do that with both men and women. Okay. And you know, it, I'm at that point in life where, well, late fifties mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I noticed things are maybe slowing down right now. I'm, I haven't done any testing. I'm just kind of throwing things at the wall and seeing what sticks. So I, <laughs> oh, what happens when I have a go through a bottle of Yohimbi? Okay, nothing. You know, my energy levels are the same. I'm still getting fat. Uh, <laughs> let me try Tribulus. Uh, yeah. and, you know, I heard that was good for male hormones. How reckless is it to just go in <laughs> blind and try things? Uh, you can do that. It just might not hit the mark. I mean, specifically <laughs> for Tribulus, um, for Tribulus for both men and women, for both sexes, libido for women postmenopausal, helping with their estrogen balances for men, their testosterone, um, erectile dysfunction issues. It's a great herb, but you need a certain dosing. Um, they've even looked at where the plant is grown in the world. And there's certain areas of the world that have better um, just properties of the, the actual working bits of the herb itself. So um, probably having someone that either knows the product or make, make sure you're getting a therapeutic dose. Cause many times patients will bring a product in and I said, that's a great herb. However, um, you would need to take, I would, this was just last week. I told a man, I'm like, you need, and it was um, a, an herb similar to tribulus, but I said, you'll need to take 61 of these to equal one of what's in this bottle that I have. So a lot of times it's just not therapeutic dosing to uh, create a good effect uh, for the body. I completely understand what you're saying <laughs> on that. And uh, so maybe going to Amazon and buying the cheapest one isn't the best option. Yeah. And unfortunately with Amazon, you don't know where it's been. There's a lot of counterfeit stuff out there too, that patients have brought in. I'm like, I don't even think this is real. Um, so yeah, you just definitely got to be careful with those kind of things for sure. I'm curious about your nutrition beliefs because a lot of my audience uh, will have been fighting cancer at some point in their life yeah. or having, a, you know, irritable bowel conditions. Um, some of them, I don't think are taking the best dietary approach. Uh, some might be raw vegans, um, some might be vegetarians, um, you know, some will be paleo and some will be, you know, more Weston A. Price and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I tend to be more Weston A. Price, paleo, a little bit of George Rubin influence. Yep. Where do you stand? I'd probably say personally, I'm more along the Weston A. Price model. Um, I am the chapter leader for two chapters. <laughs> so that's, I tend to go that route. Um, but I do think that people can be helped with different styles of diets. Um, I think there's not one size fits all approach either for patients. Um, so for me, it's really about cleaning up their diet, you know, getting them to eat as unprocessed as possible, whole foods, um, foods that have the least amount of chemicals. Now we're seeing such a increase in glyphosate in food and in the environment. And we can even do urine tests to see how much glyphosate, which is for those of you that don't know, glyphosate is Roundup and Roundup is very detrimental to your body. It's been shown to cause um, cancer issues. We know it is an endocrine disruptor, meaning it'll mess up your hormones. So just if anything, if we're going to take any dietary steps, it's probably cleaning up the diet, trying to eat as clean and organically as you possibly can, just because of those detrimental effects from those chemicals that they're putting on our food supply these days. Yeah. I completely agree. And I think you nailed it for anyone that might be offended by me saying the vegan diet isn't the best, healthiest diet, yeah. possibly for what you were going through and maybe needing a detoxifying cleansing diet. Maybe it is the best diet for you at this point in time or was the best diet for you at some point in time. And the benefit is all the cleansing and detoxifying from the herbs and spices and vegetation. Yeah. And they have cleansing properties. And that's very, very good. He, like you mentioned, obviously avoiding the chemicals, the toxic assault, the glyphosate. Absolutely. Yeah. So and I think that's one of the biggest challenges we have right now, just in the, in the United States with our food supply is how chemically laden it is these days.
How do you think that plays into all of the thyroid problems people are having, all the hormone imbalances? Yeah. It's, it's huge. It's huge. I think the two biggest things that are creating the most havoc in patients overall, like chronically, is just chemicals in the environment and stress. Because we know there's that whole process in the body that happens when we're under stress. And the like I said, the glyphosate has been shown, and glyphosate and even artificial sweeteners, both of those have been shown to wreck and ruin your, your gut microflora. So if you're doing artificial sweeteners to try to be healthy, to lose weight, you're destroying your gut microbiome, which then therefore will tend to make you gain more weight and not lose weight. So it's almost, it's counterproductive for what you're doing. And then the glyphosate itself, like I said, there's, you can just turn on the TV now and see, have you, have you been around glyphosate? Have you done this? You know, there's class, class action lawsuits now for those, those products. Um, so it's, it's not good, um, but it's, it's, I think educating people on, how to know what's, you know, what products have it and then how to avoid it and then how to clean up the body. So even though your, your toxicity score was a 40, if you're not eating organically most of the time, you know, doing some sort of detoxification program once a year is highly recommended because you just feel better. Even though, like I said, you probably don't have a lot of chronic issues right now. Um, but it's huge once you can kind of take that out of, out of the system for a bit. Ease my concerns when it comes to cleansing, detoxing, because I'll, I'll always caution people, don't just jump into yeah. a cleanse or a detox, especially something that might be harsh, like a strong parasite cleanse, for instance. Yeah, yeah those can be a bit rough on people at first. Um, so definitely working with, a if, you, if you've not done it before, definitely working with a practitioner that's educated and knows what the heck they're doing, I think is important. When it comes to products, um, we all work, we're all, you know, have kids, we're, we're stressed out. So choosing a, a company or a product or a program that is gentle, I think is important. Um, I'm not a fan of those, you know, three day sit on the toilet and don't leave your house kind of cleanses. <laughs> Mine are more geared to the everyday person that still has to work and work out and take care of a family. So mine are more gentle on the body. You still get amazing results, but the whole point is we can do it within our lifestyle. Um, that's really important to me. And in looking at a, a product or a company or practitioner that has been doing it and has results, like I've been tracking the results of my programs for the last 20 years. On average, if someone goes through my 21 day program, average weight loss, 10 pounds. If you need to lose weight, average drop in blood pressure, 20 points, average drop in cholesterol, 20 to hundred points. Um, that toxicity questionnaire score average change in that is 55%, which is freaking huge. Because if you think in three weeks, 55% of your symptoms are gone or at least decreased by that much. I mean, it's, it's giving people their lives back. Um, so it's, it's probably the, the easiest thing you can do in the shortest amount of time that can affect your health in a very positive way. For those listening, if you're seeing it on YouTube, that's easy in the description. I'll have a link where you can get the toxicity test. It's easy to download and print and, and fill out and calculate your score. Hopefully you're seeing this on the drhaley.com blog, and I'll have links to the website, to your YouTube channel where there's great content, to the toxicity test and more. How many servings of fruits and vegetables should you eat daily? The CDC recommended five a day. The World Health Organization recommends eating at least 400 grams or five portions of fruit and vegetables per day as part of a healthy diet. Mayo Clinic Health System suggests one, two, three approach to eating six servings a day. Cancer.gov has some general tips for all cancer survivors, including eating a plant-based diet and have at least five to nine servings of fruit and vegetables daily. The American Heart Association encourages you to try for four to five servings of each per day, or nine total. The USDA MyPlate for those 14 years old and up recommends two cups of fruit and two and a half cups of vegetables. Page 20 of the Dietary Guidelines for Americans recommends two and a half cups of vegetables and two cups of fruits daily. Why are we seeing this pattern? Studies are showing that people aren't eating enough fruits and vegetables. According to harvard.edu, a diet rich in vegetables and fruits can lower blood pressure, reduce the risk of heart disease and stroke, prevent some types of cancer, lower risk of eye and digestive problems, and have a positive effect upon blood sugar, which can help keep appetite in check. So what's so special about plant foods? A single plant food can have hundreds and even thousands of unique nutrients. 
A good way to make sure you're getting all of them is to eat 10 servings of fruits and vegetables every day, representing all the colors. For those that just can't do it, Eat scoop of Aya greens. Vegetable and fruit powder has the antioxidant equivalent of 10 servings of vegetables and fruits. Just a scoop a day is all it takes for many to actually feel a difference with more energy and clarity. Get yours today at HaleyNutrition.com. What's a treatment program going to look like for your patients that would actually visit you in one of your offices? Are they going to get chiropractic? Are they going to be, you know, tested to see if they need a detox or what's it look like? I custom tailor everything to each person. So there's no canned, you know, program, um, treatment plan, whatever you want to call it for them. Um, currently I have two chiropractors in both offices. So I have at this point stepped away and given them the chiropractic care so I can focus on more of the functional medicine. Mm -hmm. Um, and I see patients virtually. So that's kind of nice too. Obviously I'm not adjusting people virtually, but, um, I can work with people virtually all around the country for the functional medicine side of things. So normally I offer a complimentary consultation because I just don't take everybody. I want to make sure one, I know what you have going on and two, that I think I can help. Um, that's pretty important to me that we have a good relationship moving forward. So at that point in time, after a quick 20 minute consultation, uh, that's where I decide, do we need to get some lab work? Have you had labs done somewhere else that I want to pull and look at? So each person gets something custom tailored completely. And then if we do any diagnostics at that first new patient appointment that lasts about an hour, we go through everything. Most of my patients tell me that they learn more about their body in that one hour than they have going to any doctor their entire life. <laughs> I take that as a very nice compliment. Um, so it's really going in depth, talking about the function, the physiology of their body, and then really what we need to do to kind of start putting things in the right direction. And each care plan will be different. I might see some patients for three months, it might be summer, a year or two, you know, if we've got some um, complicated autoimmune cases. But in general, like I said, everything is just completely custom for each person. Why lime and lotus? Ah, I love alliterations, first of all. <laughs> and I knew I wanted to have that multifaceted just name that could encompass both the nutrition that I do, the holistic health and healing that I do. Um, each of my practices, I have other practitioners that have different modalities. So I wanted them to be able to be under one roof. So we have everything from chiropractors to massage therapists, to estheticians, to co um, counselors and coaches and Reiki practitioners. So um, I just fell in love with that name once I, yeah. you know, I popped into my head. When you have so many different kinds of practitioners in the office, uh, it's hard to maintain good reviews on Google, yet you have a perfect <laughs> Five star. I'm proud of my 4.9. <laughs> you have a perfect five. I've never seen that before. Thank Unless you. <laughs> someone has one review, but you have a lot of reviews. Yes. I have taken a lot of time to carefully choose and curate the people that are in my practices. I turned away a number of people, but we finally have gotten people that are a perfect fit for us. So thank you for, for noticing that. We are very proud of, of the, those ratings as well. <laughs> I'm also a fan of a lot of things that you're doing. I, having looked through some of your products, for instance, I noticed that you have your own digestive enzymes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's obviously an important role, and especially as people are getting older and they're not digesting their food. I also realized that you understand that skin is kind of a digestive organ. One of your products is actually a transdermal supplement. Yes. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, I have a transdermal progesterone. I might recommend that for patients where we know that there's a progesterone issue with them. We're using it short term or maybe between cycles. So I've done lab work on them. I know exactly what they need. And it's an easy way for them to get some lower dosing uh, product into their system so they can start feeling better. You know, my goal with my patients isn't to always do everything from the outside in. But I also understand that it's sometimes the body's at the point where it needs some support. So we might be using different tools to kind of like a training wheel, you know, as we're training the body to make more hormones, to get better function, to communicate more easily, we're going to use some tools along the way. Um, my goal is not to have patients on supplements forever, um, but it's to use those as tools as we heal the body. And then we start pulling those products away. And if we've done our job and the body's healed, they are not going to need those products anymore. So that's... That's my approach. What's one of your favorite testimonials related to what you do? Oh, gosh. Um, There's so many. Some of my favorite ones are when we have families that are trying to get pregnant that have not been able to get pregnant. 
And um, when they go through, I have one, I'll give you one quick story. I had one patient that she went through my detox program. Both her and her husband were trying to conceive. And I said, as part of my preconception care, I both want you to go through detox because whatever's in you, like we want to get rid of as much as we can in that process so that you have a better chance of conceiving, um, getting pregnant, staying pregnant and having a healthy baby. So I remember the first chat we had, I told her there was no coffee for 21 days. She literally cried in my office. (laughs) She was so sad. I I would have cried. I said, I promise give me three weeks without coffee. Um, You're going to have more energy than you thought you would have. I promise. I said, it's not going to feel like that now, but it will. And um, so she did. And then one of the things she said at the end of the program, she said, I'm so glad I did it. She was right. I do have more energy. I feel better. I feel lighter. Both my husband and I are feeling great right now. And then about two months later, she called me and she, she was pregnant. So she was going around town, basically telling everyone that Dr. Stephanie got her pregnant. And I said, no, Dr. Stephanie didn't get you pregnant. Your husband did. But, um, you know, it was just being able to be a part of that journey with them to start a family um, was just so, so, so special to me. So she cried again, only for the right reasons. She did. She did. Yeah. I also like the fact that you took the approach and said, let's get you both detoxed. Mm -hmm. Why do you do that? I think it's important for if for just for preconception care, both the man and the woman, because a lot of times the women's blamed for issues, but sometimes it's a guy's. Mm-hmm. Um, so just giving them both the tools to just really just refresh their systems and reset their systems. And also, I think as a couple that brings them together too. whether you want to do this with a spouse or a family member or a girlfriend of yours. You know, when we do things like this and get healthy together, we tend to stay on it more readily. We tend to kind of make that more of a lifestyle choice. So that was also part of of the process. I would say there's probably a whole bunch of people that are going to hear this, that their challenge is energy levels, Mm -hmm. sleep deprivation, night sweats, hormone changes, both men and women. Have you any stories from people that have recovered from those things? Yes, I get those weekly. Um, because a lot of times, especially if you're kind of moving through your 30s, 40s, 50s, this is the time where your adrenal glands a lot of times start taking over for the hormone productions as opposed to your for the ladies, the ovaries, for the men, the testicles. But if those systems aren't strong enough, then you start getting symptoms typically. It's not that those systems are, are diseased or you've got a, a major disease going on, because if they test you, they're probably not gonna find a disease, but it's more of the functionality. Symptoms of that are generally fatigue, brain fog, insomnia, waking up at night, not being able to sleep, feeling tired and wired, not being refreshed after sleeping eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 hours, and just an overall like kind of loss of zest for life or just not motivated to do stuff. Like you'll push yourself to get through the day because you have to, but then you're just sitting and vegging out on the couch. That is, those are the patients I love because that system is, so, it rebounds so quickly. I mean, those patients I'm working with maybe three to six months and they are literally a like completely different people after I'm done with them. So with that, I generally run some lab work, kind of just see where your cortisol levels are at, some other adrenal hormones and a few other hormones. But once we can get that back on track, you really do feel like a a new person. So I I love, I have so many of those. I wouldn't even know where to start. (laughs) Well, I suspected, of course. Now you said three to six months, but how long until they actually see, uh, start seeing a change and and have that hope that, yes, I think I found the solution. If we've, if we've done like some diagnostics, I know exactly what we need to do when we need to do it. I expect change within the first 30 days. We are, and I have questionnaires that they're filling out and hand out. So we're actually monitoring that on both a subjective and objective levels, but they should be feeling some positive change within the first month. Um, usually I get about between 20 and 30% change each month. So that's kind of how my plans are geared anywhere between three and six months for those kind of patients. And how so. much medicine is involved and how much a supplement is involved? Zero medicine. <laughs> if you come to the table on medicine, that's okay. You know, a lot of my patients will say, I'm on this, this, and this. I don't want to be on it. Um, it's not my job or within my scope of practice to take you off that. But what tends to happen is when the body functions better, a lot of times you might not need those medications. So at that point, I refer you back to the doctors to let them handle that and manage that for you. But a lot of patients have been able to get off medications. They're feeling better. And then, and then we take them off the supplements. So that's great too. And start having them consume real foods. Exactly. Nutrient dense foods. Yep. It's amazing what the body does when we give it what it wants, all the right raw materials. 
I love it. I love it. Where do you think someone should start? Should they go to your website, your YouTube channel, take the toxicity quiz? Yeah. If, if you're having some of the symptoms we've discussed today, start with the toxicity quiz would be awesome. And then if you want more information, by all means, website is great. If you want to connect with me, like I said, I always offer people a complimentary 20 minute phone chat before we get started, just to make sure we're a good fit. And I'd love to help any way I can. And if I can't, I will definitely find someone to send you to. That's awesome. Is there anything else that you wish I had asked or that you would want to share? Ah, I think the biggest thing that I'll say is just remember that you have to be your own health advocate. I think sometimes we forget that. And if you go to the doctor, just like I did when I was in college and the answers didn't sit right with you, that's okay. Listen to your intuition, listen to that inner voice and go for the second or even third opinion or, or find out someone that's doing something a little bit different that might have a better answer that's going to fit with what feels right to you. So don't be afraid to branch out and, and do that. I like that. Yeah. If something doesn't seem right or feel right, it probably isn't. And you exactly. can get that other opinion and that might, you know, confirm your thoughts there. So I love it. Uh, Dr. Stephanie Zagragan, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Dr. Haley. I appreciate it.